What's up, everybody? And welcome to another episode. Real quick, I just want to respond to the video that Dubs made this morning. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out on my boy Dubs' page. He made a video responding to my two videos on the Pelican Bay riot. In his video, he said that, and Dubs and I have talked since his video dropped. We talked earlier today, a little while ago. And he said that he didn't say this or he wasn't trying to say that, but I took it like he painted the picture that I made the Southsiders look like cowards. And that's not what I did. Uh, he said that that wasn't his intention. I'm reading some of the comments on Doug's page responding to his video. And uh, people are in there saying, yeah, <laughs> Damien is a racist, you know, and all of this. People are on my page, they've been on my page from the beginning saying my people saying that Dubs is a racist. I've never known Dubs to be a racist. Dubs and I were very cool in CYA before we had that fight. You can't even call it a fight. He fired on me. I was dazed. I didn't even fire back on him. I couldn't. I was dazed. It wasn't an ass whooping either, like some of his people said. Uh, Damien's just still mad because you whooped his ass in white. He didn't whoop my ass. He swung one time. He got a good one in. Knocked my tooth back. But he didn't whoop my ass. And you can't either. And Dubs, he, he and I were on the Pomo in El Paso. And as he said, he, he told me today, I haven't seen the video. that When he made the video a year ago or so about the fight that he and I had, that he had explained in that video that he and I were very close, as close as two people can be from different races in that sort of situation. And that's true. He and I were very cool. And so for the people who think I have a problem with the Southsiders, that's just, that's just these young people that these young kids who are just full of racism themselves, full of hatred themselves, and you just don't know me. Because to know me is to know that I don't hate anyone, never have, including white people, anyone. I don't hate anyone. I get along with everybody, always have. Everybody likes me. I have, a, I have, I have, I have the biggest heart in the world. And personally, I'm very close with a lot of Southsiders. I'm talking about some big dogs, have been real close with them and have always respected them and respected the way the Southsiders get out, respected the way they adhere to their structure, the way they have a hierarchy and they respect it. Even if they don't agree with a call that comes down, they still get, they still perform, they still adhere to the call. That's admirable. Case in point, the Pelican Bay riot, they had inner turmoil. Some people wanted to go up, some didn't. But the ones who did, obviously overpowered the ones that didn't, and they all, whether they wanted to do it or not, agreed with the call or not, they still did it. And I never tried to paint the picture that the Southsiders were cowards. All I said was that no one, can, and I'm still saying, that no one can deny that the blacks were not in the best position. Dub said that there in Pelican Bay, blacks are often released from the shoot. Now, you still have to do a lot of shoot time. How many blacks were released from December to February? I did 38 months, and you don't just get released. It's not the whole. You don't get released every day from the shoot. You're back there for years, especially at that time. He said they were were replaced with solid and seasoned blacks. The blacks that left from the war with the whites, 
were replaced with solid and seasoned blacks. I disagree. The leadership up there in Pelican Bay was extremely faulty. Obviously, they had no good leadership. These dudes could not have been that solid. For one, we see them running. Some of that is understandable. They get attacked with a lot of knives or weapons, and they don't have any of themselves. Another thing, they should have had some for many different reasons. A war just transpired with the whites, and they had to know there was tension with the Southsiders because of this J-Cat. Dubs also said that I said I'm questioning whether or not he was a J-Cat. He was a J-Cat, fine. But, and that that's why the leadership was faulty, because he should not have been on the yard, ever. If I was a leader there, he would have never been on the yard as a J-Cat. This is why. Look at what, both of these things happened over J-Cats. The whites had a J-Cat on the yard, and he transgressed against the black and did what he did, and there was a war. The blacks allowed this monster J-Cat guy to stay on the yard. And then after the interaction with the Southsider, where they had weapons and all that, and asked the blacks to get him off the yard, they certainly should have got him at the, off the yard at that point. So I'm not blaming the Southsiders. It's really the blacks' fault that the riot ever transpired for many different reasons. It's also the blacks' fault that they didn't have weapons out there and was more prepared. That's nobody's fault but them. And nobody said that the Southsiders were, were wrong for waiting. What, what y'all supposed to do? Wait until we get our numbers up or wait until... We get more weapons on the yard. Nobody's going to do that. I've been in riots where the blacks had way more numbers than the people that we were rioting with. That happens in riots. This is prison. It's not fair. They're not going to let us know what's going on. I understand that. Y'all say I, couldn't, I can't admit that we lost. We lost. I been said that. I said, look at the video. I said that in one of my other videos. I was showing the video. I said, man, they, they got us. And that was that. And... So y'all just don't know me. Y'all got me all wrong. I've always respected the Southsiders. I still talk to some of them on the phone. Right now that's in prison. I've written them letters. I, man, they looked out for me when others, when some, sometimes my own people didn't. I, I've sat in the holding tank and watched a Southsider break one sandwich into 10 pieces and make sure every one of his people got a bite of that damn sandwich. I swear to God. So I've always liked the love that they've had for each other and the respect that they've had for one another. I said so. And I said in my first video, if you stop being so racist and open your mind and your heart and pay attention to what I said, I said I was not there. I said I've never been to Pelican Bay. I also said, I kept saying, this is the black side. This is what the blacks believe. I kept saying that, and every time I would say what the black side was, I would follow it up by saying, the Southsiders have a different story. The Southsiders said they have their reason. I said that every time to make sure I got in their point. That's before I even did the second video, giving their whole story. Anyway, no one who's ever done the sort of time that I've done in the places that I've done them at can ever fix their mouths to say that the Southsiders are cowards. You ain't been nowhere if you believe that. I've seen too much. I've seen them do some cold removals. I've seen them do unalivings. I've seen them be structured and on point for years. I've been places with them, man. You know what I'm saying? I can, I can you can never, just the mere fact that they did what they did. Dub said it was 120 to 120. I don't know about that. It wasn't 120, 120 blacks and 117 Southsiders, 119, 120 Southsiders and 119 blacks. It was just 120 to 120. I don't know if I've ever seen just an even number like that on the yard, but okay. Whatever the situation was and is, they were not wrong for attacking even if we didn't have numbers. 
they're, they're not supposed to wait for us to get numbers. We're just supposed to be ready with the numbers that we do have. So no one is blaming the Southsiders. And no one, as I said, could ever say just the mere fact that you made the move. It takes heart, for one, to make a thing, to carry a thing, have it in your cell all the time. And the Southsiders always got the, they always ready. They always ready with them things. And all black people know that. People that made rap songs about that. Uh, 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 uh. Bushwick Bill, you know, stab you quick, quicker than the Mexican. Back in the 80s, we've been know that y'all play with them things. You know what I'm saying? And so it takes heart to have them things all the time. And then it takes heart to use them. Because it's not like the street or, you know, drive-bys and all that where you're using the thing. Everyone knows when you're hitting someone, it's personal. It's up close and personal. That takes a different kind of heart. So the fact that everyone did it and participated, all the Southsiders, automatically means y'all not cowards. We can see the video. So whoever said that, you just don't know what you're talking about. And you don't know me. If you think I think you're cowards, I, I, I've seen too much to, to ever believe something like that. Me and Dubs are cool, and we're still cool. We, we, I was going to do a response to the Pelican Bay riot. People want to know if there was a response. They've been asking me that. I'm not going to even do the response now. I'm done talking about the Pelican Bay thing. I wasn't there. The riot is it, about to be 24 years old in February. That's over, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm not bitter about the riot like people were saying in his comments. Not at all. I wasn't there. And... I said in my video, level four protocols. If you go look at the video, I said the exact words. Did I not? What did I say? I said, if someone disrespects someone of another race and that other race leader comes to them and say, man, he disrespected my people. We want him off the yard. And y'all don't get him off the yard, it's going to go up. I said those exact words, verbatim. It's going to go up. I said when people make mistakes, your whole car has to suffer. People get hurt, I said. That's why you can't go against the rule. The rule is the J-Cat shouldn't be on the yard. And it's certainly a rule that a removal is always violent. It's physical. They allowed the J-Cat to roll it up so he didn't get punished for what he did. He just rolled his property up. They want to remove. Understandable. It's a removal, which means you got to smash him and get him off the yard. Not just let, let him walk away scot-free. So the leadership was just all bad up there. And that's where it starts and really ends at for me. Not blaming any Southsiders for what they did. It was smart. It was strategic. It's war. It ain't fair. You know what I'm saying? Any 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 real man, any gangster knows that. It ain't fair. War ain't fair. Sometimes they got the numbers. Sometimes we got the numbers. That's just the way it is. They took care of business, bro. And I've seen it in many situations where they take care of business. That's it. <clears throat> I don't care what nobody say. That's it. I have people, my people, or one black dude anyway, said in my comments that I couldn't represent him. He has a, uh, uh, he doesn't trust my judgment because I said that, that I got involved in the hunger strike to help the Southsiders and the blacks get from behind the shoe. He said, man, you a Serenio lover. That's what he said. Another black said, man, you made blacks look bad in the high desert versus whites riot when you talking about you give them credit that you respect them now just because the police helped them get their things out to the yard. That's not why I said I respected them, man. You don't know what you're talking about. As I said, I was in high desert for seven years. And that entire, the riot was one incident. And you can respect them for that too. You can give them credit for that. Because at the end of the day, yeah, they got their things out. But they made the things. They had the things. And then they had the heart to use them. And it was coming at blacks with two things at a time. Two things in their hand, bro. That takes heart. But that wasn't why I was giving them credit. 
or not that alone. The whole seven years, they were putting in work. And if you were up there, you, you will have no choice but to give them credit too. If they earned my respect, trust me, they would have earned yours. Unless you were just a type of person that doesn't give credit where it's due. But if you're strong and man enough to give credit where it's due, you will have no choice but to respect the woods in high desert state prison. Believe me. And every other group that was up there was putting in work. As far as Big Bubba, I said in my second video, which I had already made a couple of days ago, that I thought that it was disgusting, that I think that it's hypocrisy to allow these predators to stay on the yard. I said this in my second video. I already made it. I ain't just now saying this. That if someone comes into prison for the same thing, that we gonna, he going to get airlifted off the yard. But it's okay for these dudes to stay on the yard. I had that conversation with my big homie before who was in, I was in the cell with. And he said, bro, I don't agree with it. But it's been going on long before we was in prison. But if one of our homies do it, he's out of here. Okay, cool. Glad to know that our car... Don't support that. I was in the county jail. Somebody came and told me that one of the homies had made an attempt on him. In that way, I questioned the homie. He tried to say it happened in a different way, but almost admitted to what happened. I, I, I went up on him, took flight on the homie. The homies was right there with me. They'd tell you, and I told him, get him. And weapons were involved, and we got him right then and there. I don't play that. I think it's nasty and disgusting. I also think that you're gay that you're a homosexual. These dudes think that because they're giving and not receiving, that they're not gay. No, you're still gay. It's okay if you're gay. I have no problem with gay people, but that's just what you are. And just say that. So, so, and then I gave you the story about Slim to begin with because, because I want to tell you about a 20 year old. I'm not going to omit the truth from you. People ask me about this sort of stuff. If this sort of stuff happens in there, I want you to know the truth. And if I lie to you or act like this stuff doesn't happen, then I'm not equipping you. I'm not giving you the true information about what transpires behind those walls. And as ugly and nasty as the story is to hear and for me to tell it because it's disgusting. I said in the video that I felt bad for Slim. I said in the video that I started to look at the OG way different. I said in the video that I moved sales. I couldn't take it. You know what I'm saying? If, if anyone had ever tried me like that, that would have been it for him. Everybody who he knows. I don't care. So I don't I, I don't agree with it. I think it's disgusting and nasty. And I don't believe that these dudes should stay on the yard. I believe that it's a sex crime. How, I, however you look at it. So I'm not giving these stories of Big Bubba to glorify this stuff. But instead, I'm giving these stories so that you would know the truth that this sort of stuff does happen. I'm giving you the signs. Why do you think I'll tell you that these dudes, they test you so you'll know what the test is and you'll know how to respond in case you find yourself in this situation. And that's my job, to keep it real with you and equip, with you, equip you with the knowledge to defend yourself and be safe and save yourself should you ever find yourself in this situation or if w one of your loved ones is in this situation right now because it does happen as much as it it is disgusting and as much as i don't like it it used to be times in the los angeles county jail like on on a level four 180 yard it don't really happen it never happens people have come around and they find it disgusting bro and so they will get you up out of there if they hear about something like that. But like in a Los Angeles County Jail, a place that's unstructured, it happens. And back in the days in the LA County Jail, they used to tie you up, strip you down naked, use the bathroom on you, pour shampoo on you, pour coffee on you. Sometimes it's not about gratification. It's about humiliating the person that's in there that they're doing it to. If you're in there, because you've done something like this against a child, you're a chomo, or you've abused in this way, you've raped a woman, they want to humiliate you to show you how that woman feel. 
They want to traumatize you for the rest of your life. They strip you down and stick a brute. Sometimes it's an object. It's not them. It's not about gratification. It's about humiliation. They stuck broomsticks. Think about how thick a broomstick is, bro. I know of stories. I know of situations. Some of your homeboys. It's some of your homeboys that I'm talking about. That's these predators behind the wall. Y'all that's commenting is your big homies. And some of your homies and also had broomsticks stuck up in them in the Los Angeles County Jail. I know all about them. But it used to be objects sometimes just to humiliate the person for the crime that they're in there for. I'm not justifying it. I'm just telling you what I know, what they told me as to why they do this. Me, I don't get down like that. You come in there for a crime against a child, against a woman, I just go up on you. That's it. I'm going to send you out of there leaking. I ain't pulling down your pants and all this, this, this freaky stuff. I ain't with it. Never have been with it. So I'm not telling these stories to glorify it. These dudes are predators. They print, Slim was a 20-year-old child. A 20-year-old man, but a young, uh, you know, a, still a young kid. When I think about it now, I'm about to be 50, but I was 20 years old at the time as well. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but he was about to be 20. Or he was 20. I, I was 20. But he was still a child. And this dude was an older dude. And y'all are also right. I shouldn't have said Slim's name because he is a victim. And I apologize for that, Slim. For saying his name. Because I don't agree with what happened. It was disgusting. That's why I moved sales. And that's why I said I don't look at him the same. And so that's it. Big Bubba Part 2 and Part 3 is already made. It's coming out to show you the different signs and the different situations. Part 3, you're going to see, is a G homie that I grew up with. This dude's a real gangster, bro. To this day, he is. And it happened to him. To show you they ain't just little kids. It was about humiliation. Because of what he was in there for. It happens to different people for different reasons. You have to be careful. And that's my message. Stay out of there. Because this stuff does happen. I'm not glamorizing or glorifying it. I want you to know. Excuse me. I don't know why my eyes watering. This stuff does happen. That's it. Stay out. My eye watering right now. Stay out. Stay out of prison. Big Bubba 2 is coming up, not to glorify it, but to so that you'll know the signs, you'll know how to avoid these predators, you'll know what to do, and your family member, your loved one that may be in there right now will know the signs and what to do and how these people test you and try you and how to respond to that. That's it. All right? So... I have to have a paper towel right here. I don't want to. So, that's what it's about. Nothing but love for the Southsiders. To know me is to know that. That's it. Strong dudes, real, <laughs> real soldiers, bro. Period. Straight up. Uh, and Big Bubba is real. It's not to glorify or glamorize Big Bubba. It's to give my people and all people the truth that he's in there and to, how, how to avoid him and to avoid prison to begin with. No hatred for anyone. Pelican Bay, a done subject for me, man. Dubs, love for you, bro. Stay free, people.